Hello everyone, my name is Andrew with St. Andrew TV and the clip you just saw was a cutscene when you win a game of Call of Duty Warzone. The mysterious sniper on the hill is Call of Duty Vanguard operator Polina Petrova. Now you're probably wondering why she's placed there in particular. Well, first and foremost, it's probably to promote their new game coming out named Call of Duty Vanguard. But the thing that struck me the first time I saw it is why this character in particular? So I did some moseying around and I found that Polina Petrova is roughly based off Soviet sniper Lyudmila Pavlichenko, the deadliest woman with a gun in military history, dubbing her the nickname Lady Death. So I decided to name the video why I think Call of Duty Vanguard is already a success because I'm gonna tie in a little bit of pop culture here and give you a bit of a backstory on Lady Death. I think it's a pretty cool thing that Call of Duty is implementing historical figures into their game. I mean, the game itself isn't necessarily historically accurate, but it is cool to see them pay homage to historical figures. And I think all five operators are roughly based off somebody, but we're going to do Pavlichenko first because she was the first one to be leaked. So if you guys like these kind of videos, kind of discussing the historical accuracy of video games, please let me know. I'll continue to do them for Call of Duty Vanguard and any other game you so please. Just let me know in the comments. But this biography piece will be on Lyudmila Pavlichenko. So strap in, comrade. Lyudmila was born in 1916 to Russian parents Olina and Mikhailo Bialov in Belit Tzerkva in the Russian Empire, which is now known as Kiev Oblast, Ukraine. As she grew older, she appeared destined to serve in the Communist Party of Russia as she was very intelligent. I suppose this is partly true as she was introduced to the TOZ-8 22 caliber target rifle. She was an excellent shot for her age and was even a part of some sportsmen's clubs, even winning some awards along the way. Possessing good hand-eye coordination, steadiness, excellent eyesight, and cat-like patience, it seems serving Russia was inevitable, yet not in the way it was originally hypothesized. In 1937, she began attending Kiev University, where she studied history. She also enrolled in a military sniping school, hosted by the Red Army. When Adolf Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa in June 1941, Lyudmila left school to enlist in the Red Army. She was one of around 2,000 women in the ranks at the time, joining the Red Army 25th Rifle Division. Her service would be on the Eastern Front, with her biggest battles being the Siege of Odessa and the Siege of Sevastopol. She collected 309 confirmed kills in her line of work, though some historians estimate the total to be closer to 500. In these 309 confirmed kills, 36 were with rival German snipers, where she never lost a duel. Safe to say you wouldn't want to find yourself on the business end of her gun barrel. Her arsenal of weapons included a Mosnan Nagent Model 1891-30 with a PE scope, and for you COD fans out there, that would be the three-line rifle, and the SVT-40 semi-automatic rifle. In 1942, after suffering four different injuries, Lyudmila withdrew from combat. She met with Joseph Stalin, who gave her orders to go on a Soviet delegation tour to the West, including Canada, Great Britain, and the United States, where she was dubbed Lady Death. During her tour, she spoke about gender equality and urged the U.S. to continue the fight against the Nazis in Europe. Gentlemen, I am 25 years old and I have killed 309 fascist occupants by now. Don't you think, gentlemen, that you have been hiding behind my back for too long? This quote was met with thunderous applause. During her visit to the White House, she formed an unlikely but long-lasting friendship with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. She was also the first Soviet citizen to be welcomed to the White House when she met with Franklin Roosevelt.
Our women were on a basis of complete equality long before the war. From the first day of the revolution, full rights were granted the women of Soviet Russia. One of the most important things is that every woman has her own specialty. That is what actually makes them as independent as men. Soviet women have complete self-respect because their dignity as human beings is fully recognized. Whatever we do, we are honored not just as women, but as individual personalities, as human beings. That is a very big word. Because we can be fully that, we feel no limitations because of our sex. That is why women have so naturally taken their places beside men in this war. After all this, she returned to the Soviet Union where she worked for the Soviet Navy. In 1957, she finished school and became a historian. During the later part of her life, she battled with her PTSD and addiction with alcohol due to the many head injuries she suffered during her service. In 1974, Lyudmila had a stroke and passed away at the age of 58. She was buried with full military honors in the Novodevichy Cemetery in Moscow, Russia. Thus concluding the life of the women's and civil rights advocate, Soviet hero, and the deadliest female sniper in military history, Lyudmila Pavlichenko. Lady Death. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I enjoyed making it. There's a lot of work that goes into these, but the biography pieces and the ability to learn about prominent historical figures is very rewarding. Like I said earlier, if you guys want more biography pieces on the other operators in Call of Duty Vanguard, please feel free to let me know because I have no problem doing them. Or if you'd like me to cover historical accuracy in any other video games, I like to cover pop culture and mix it with my forte, which is history. I should probably take this thing off because the United States is way more scared of communism than we are of fascism, obviously. That was Soviet sniper Lyudmila Pavlachenko. By the way, my Oregon Trail videos are in the works right now. I just have to tighten up a few loose ends. They will be on our way and you will discover some of the locations of the treasure and you'll get to see what it's like to drive the Oregon Trail in the year 2021 and not 1843. So hold tight. My name is Andrew with St. Andrew TV. Think about subscribing to the channel. You're Daisy if you do.